Get in my ship. Get in. Join the club. Join the field combat kids club. <laughs> So yeah, as it says at the bottom of the screen, we are playing some Jalico Apley games. Uh, a few years back, this company, what was it, Hamster? Hamster. Hamster ported a whole bunch of Jalico cell phone games to uh, the PlayStation TV, PS Vita, and PlayStation mobile compatible devices. These are very rarely seen games. You had to have an, uh, a Japanese feature phone. Ooh. It used a, a subset of Java. And it ran on iMode devices. So if you know what Java cell phone games look like, uh, oh, yeah, I know that's those. what these games look like. Amazing. That's I'm like... going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with Jalico City Connection Collection. <laughs> collection. Bless your heart, Jalico. All right, here. It's a collection of connections. The Connection Collection. Here we go. Yep, the Apley Archive series, very short-lived. Uh, unfortunately, Sony shut down the store a couple years back, so Ugh. the games you see tonight, you are not going to be able to buy, and I'm sorry about that. That kind of sucks. This is basically a big tease, and also a warning against the uh, perils of digital distribution. But we'll get to that later. Let's enjoy what we have now. So, this caution screen immediately sets uh, expectations here. First of all, it says these games continue to be in Japanese, and we haven't changed them at all. Don't think they look or sound any better, because they look and sound like crap, basically, is what you can uh, tell from reading between the lines here. So what Jalico did is they made a whole bunch of games for feature phones in Japan, and we're going to play through a whole bunch of them. First up is City Connection DX. Again, keep in mind that these were for Java cell phones, and they were controlled with keypads. Like, these aren't smartphones. These are dumb phones. <laughs> no touchscreen. complete and utter asshole phones. You had to type Can't on your keypad shit. like an idiot. Phones for cavemen, these phones. <laughs> these phones were actually pretty cool compared to our phones at the time, honestly. Yeah, they were more advanced than uh, phones elsewhere in the world at the mm -hmm. time. Since then, smartphones have pretty much become the new standard that everyone uses. So City Connection DX takes a while to load, huh? Sure does. And then... Nothing. <laughs> this is so good. For those of us, for those of you who are new to the Adventure Pals, this is kind of par for the course. <laughs> yep. The one constant of our streams. The, the tech betrays us. It foils us at every step. All right. So City Connection DX is pretty much just a, uh, a mobile phone compatible version of the original City Connection. Kind of pared down, kind of simple. The sequel, on the other hand, which I guess we'll play instead, <laughs> is a different game. In fact, it's the only official sequel to City Connection ever released for any platform. And ironically, it came long after Jalico's long, slow death in the 90s and 2000s. These were produced by a company called PCCW, who were the owners of Jalico's IP at the time. Nowadays, it, uh, those rights lie with a company called Clarice Disc. Please load. Good. Ah, cool. So here's a working cell phone game, 2004. Let's travel back then. Imagine what it was like to live in Japan and have a cell phone. You might be able to play great games such as these. There's actually three different games. I think they're levels. Like, you have to finish the first story before you unlock the second one. So let's get started. In the United States of America. The volume here might be a little low. Yeah. Maybe. Honestly, no big loss. This is such a subdued version of the song. Oh my god, the cat's... Not, Cats can fly! Not only can they parachute, but you can hit them while they're parachuting, so oh, do sucks. look out for that. Yeah, so City Connection and, what was it, 83, 84 arcade game? Mm -hmm. The original game, you had to go around these cities around the world painting all the highways uh, for reasons that are not quite clear. Well, it's, it's kind of clear. As you may have seen in the ad, Claire, uh, it's, I think, was it the P PlayStation trans version? that Hamster did that translated the story, or...? 
I'm not sh Oh, that might have been a hamster thing, yeah. Because cause it actually is, because the translation is that Clarice is looking for... She just can't... The, the person driving, she is Clarice, and that's what Clarice does, is named after if I recall. Mm -hmm. And she's looking for a good man. And so she is just frustrated she can't find one. She is now traveling the world and trying to escape the law, if I recall. Yep, she uh, said, uh, screw the cops. I was going to say, cops. a peppet snake or a, or a gaming hell is in here. They could tell you all about that. In fact, I'm going to link to their article about City Connection because it will tell you everything you know, mm -hmm. you know about it. They actually have an article about this game as well. Also, just check them out in general. They do good stuff. I'm pretty slow for a game called Rocket. <laughs> Damn it. Beautiful. So if you know the original game at all, it's probably for the NES port, which is a pretty good recreation of the arcade game. It uh, gets the point across. It's basically a, a maze game variant where you have to paint the ground instead of collect power pellets or whatever. Not a bad little game. And in the States, uh, they change the story so that you're just some random dude painting all the roads because yeah, you're, you're a rebel. Like, yeah, instead of like... <laughs> Ain't no one uh, gonna control you. Can't take oh, there all we go. Dudes. I found the rocket button. This changes everything. Okay, so this, uh, this button I'm pushing would be the I button on a Japanese cell phone for iMode phones. It is the central button. It's what you uh, push when you want to do anything. And it makes City Connection pretty great. Oh, I see. You gotta blaze across these things. Now, I haven't spent much time with these mobile games, but I did make sure to buy them right before the PlayStation Store closed forever, because it was then or never. <laughs> like, if you try to buy these games now, you can't. I think if you bought them before, you can still re-download them if you went through a complex series of steps in order to, uh... <laughs> in order to save them on your device. At the time, Sony was all like, well, you better back this up twice and make sure you do it before this date or else it's gone forever. And then at some point they said, oh, we made a mistake. Actually, you have to download it now. If you downloaded it before, it won't save and you can't re-download it. Danny, Tepid Snake came in for the save. Thank you, Tepid Snake. Um, the American story changed it uh, from you being a lady just doing the world to uh, you're a thief in the American NES version of this game. Oh, and wow. um, you have, you stole from a paint store. A paint store. So all yes. the paint is dripping cool out of the driving. back of our car. There she is. There's Clarice. Yeah, and uh, it's leaking. <laughs> That's a pretty simple story. I guess the cops shot out the paint cans in the back of your car yeah, and, you and you're just leaking roads, everywhere. So I guess they won't catch you? So you don't leave a trail. Thank you for that info. Gosh. Looks like there's a little bit of story between levels, too. This game changes things up a little so that you're no longer painting all the roads. You have to find all these secret documents or something? Sort of seems more like elevator action than a <laughs> city connection. But whatever, I guess they needed to change things up a little bit for the shift to mobile platforms. Now if you do want to play this and you didn't buy the PlayStation Mobile versions when they were available, all hope is not lost. Uh, I have seen people play emulated versions of this in video on YouTube. Don't ask me where to get mobile games, I have no idea. No I actually, clue. I actually tried to look and I was completely stumped almost immediately. And the cat. <laughs> yeah. Cat the famous. Cool the famous cat did survive the transition from the first game to the second game. In the first game, he was just there on the road like he is there. And if you hit him, he flies off the screen and you die. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. So you can either have death by cop or cat. And here, man, they just parachute in from the sky. Landing right on power-ups that you need to collect. Oh my god, they're right on that power-up and you can <laughs> What a dickhead. I, I guess I have no choice. It can't be helped, I guess. Uh, some more info from Tepid Snake. Uh, the developer of the game is a team called Studio Runba, and they actually teased a sequel to the game, uh, Double Rocket. Oh man, that was probably a long time ago, right? Yeah, they have actually they have it on their uh, web page here. City Connection got to come back someday. It's I love classic. City Connection. It's fun. It's uh, it's really fun. See, look at that, right on top of the suitcase. Oh, it looks cool. Now, compared to the original game, this is actually a pretty big upgrade. You can
can get these uh, rocket launcher power-ups for your oil cans. In the first game, you could just launch them at police cars and then tap the cars and they'd slide off screen. Here, once you get some homing missiles, you can just take out everything. Clarice got kind of bloodthirsty over the years. <laughs> I'm gonna try and see if I can finish at least this level. Oh, okay, so you can change the next level you go to. So it has a more laid back pace to suit the fact that you're playing it with a freaking pad on your <laughs> telephone. Yeah. But I'd say the control concessions they did are pretty smartly thought out, they make sense. Like, if they just straight up tried to port City Connection, you would be dead in seconds. Mm -hmm. But here they slowed things down just a little bit. And they changed the gameplay so that it's more, uh, seeking focused. I got new documents, new lore. There's also a rocket button that lets you take off with a little mini turbo. Like that. Overall, I'd say it's one of the better games we'll be seeing tonight. Uh, do not expect much from the other games, please. Yeah. This level of quality is reserved for City Connection only. Yeah, City Connection's so good, as Tepa Snake and as like I mentioned earlier, uh, the people who now own the IP are are named after the main character here, Claris. They're called Claris Disc. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the company that bought up all of Jalico's IP had to pick one thing from Jalico that represented their company. And Jalico didn't produce many noteworthy things, so Clarice is pretty much the best they had. <laughs> well, no, what about stepping selection? Okay, they could have had some stepping selection. Do you think they'll bring selection. back stepping selection? Can we petition Clarice Disc to bring back stepping selection? Weirdly, if people voted in PS2 for this week's stream, I would have played uh, stepping selection. You just got Jalico on the mind, don't yeah, you? Yeah, this would have been a secret Jalico stream, no matter what. What? what are, are we just stuck here? Come on, let's go. Let's go, come on, we gotta take out the stupid men in all the countries around the world. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Dude, some dude was calling me talking about tequila. <laughs> oh, there's a wild man out there. Gotta he wants some tequila. Him. I know some of those kanji. <laughs> He keeps talking about this tequila. Get this tequila for this man. It must be good. All right. Get some of that Indian tequila <laughs> that they're so famous for. Oh, damn it. I pushed the wrong button. Noob mistake. You should have pressed I. <laughs> the magical I button. I button. Destroy everything. Oh, okay, the boss's name is Tequila. Okay, good. So that guy's name is Tequila, it's not your Oh, uh, we're not looking for Tequila. No. The other uh, the other three bosses are named uh, Scotch and Vodka. Nice. Thanks again, Death of Snake. Man, very glad to have a City Connection lore person here, because I just... All I know is that I played a ton of it on... Uh, I played a ton of the NES version, because... The it's NES version is really good. I like that a lot. That was one of the first games I played when I discovered uh, Nesticle, actually. Oh, gosh. Nesticle's been in the news lately because it recently had its 20th anniversary. I imagine more than a few of us uh, played Nesticle back when it was first released in the late 90s. That was, <laughs> that was a fucking revelation right there. Those were some good days. Oh, God. I remember when I first got Nesticle, I... Uh... I didn't actually, I, it wasn't my first one, it was, it was the first one I ever saw, and I saw, I saw it at school, it was, uh, I went to a Catholic high school, Look and, that shit. um, man, that's cool, go on, I was in the computer lab, and someone brought in <laughs> Nesticle, with, like, an array, a, a, a wide bouquet of extremely offensive Mario hats. <laughs> Offensive in a variety of ways, many of which I don't want to talk about. It was oh, that's amazing, good. and that was the first time I ever saw anything emulated. And so I'm you're... sorry to say, my first impression was, this fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Big deal, you gave Mario a giant dick. <laughs> Grow up. I'm in what, yeah, eighth grade Mario or something? Mario with a dick, Mario in a wheelchair, worse Mario. Ah, the classic wheelchair Mario. Yeah, it was... That was my first... 
I, I, I luckily saw it once I got a Dreamcast. I, I, I actually got into emulation with the Dreamcast, and I was like, oh, so they're not all a bunch of like That's bleeding boners and, and racism. Oh, that is or such whatever. a bad way to first experience emulation. <laughs> hey, it's all the games you loved as a kid, only they're <laughs> fucked up and horrible now. <laughs> Thanks, ROM hackers. Of course, other hackers uh, produce translations of games and uh, generally use their powers for good. But yeah. Nesticle did very easily let you add dicks to your favorite video game characters. You could just draw them on in the palette table, and they would be stuck to the ROM. I just remember, like, a few of my friends being like, Hey, Alex, look at this! It's Mario, but he's racist! <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Have I got the YouTube video for you? <laughs> oh, I wish it was... Oh, oh Battle Hork, it was much worse than that. It was, uh... Oh, it was a much worse game than that, but yeah. I kind of like this. I've started... I, I played it briefly and I was like, whatever, cell phone game. But on reflection, this is a genuinely good uh, revision of the City Connection gameplay, I'd say. I like the really down-tempo music, too, actually. Yeah, it makes good use of the limited hardware. Man, if only this was an actual arcade game. Alright, Clary's Disc, that's your challenge. You make an actual arcade version of uh, City Connection Rocket. Much like Sega did for uh, Fantasy Zone 2. Get on it. That's what we all want to see. Oh, you get different Clarice pictures depending on which uh, country you clear. Oh, cool. That's something. About the only other thing I can say about City Connection is that it's one of the few arcade games that I've played to the extent where I broke the game. <laughs> Not like that's hard to do. Uh, in order to get a high, so high score in City Connection, it, you have to get, like... Uh, it's just before a million points. It's at 900,000 something. When you uh, surpass some score threshold, the game completely freaks out. Everything you do awards you like five extra lives, and the game goes on forever at that point. So once you've reached a million in City Connection, you can say that you've beaten the game, because gameplay cannot continue from that point. Let's see what the next level looks like before we pick another game here. We do have several Jalico mobile games. We several have classics. so much Jalico for you, for all you Jalico heads out there. That's all your favorite the franchises. Jalico. Yeah, that's what we're calling them, right? Yeah, Jalico, Jalico heads. heads. People who like Argus and Field Combat and uh, Bio Senshi Dan. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, Bio Senshi Dan. You got your stepping selection, you got that one game where you couldn't drive too fast or you'd die. Oh yeah! What was that called? I don't know! I thought I was gonna ask you, it's called like... It's Pulse Racer for Pulse the Xbox. Pulse Racer, because it's based on your heartbeat, and if you drive too fast, your heartbeat goes too fast and you die. Well, no, you get a heart attack, which just makes you uh, take your foot off the gas for a few seconds, then your car resuscitates you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real stupid game, Alex. I actually bought it. I fucking love Jalico. Yeah, Jalico, a real unfortunate company. They have charisma. They got moxie. They got a lot of text for a mobile game. <laughs> Looks like this might be a boss fight. Yeah, yeah, Magma. It's the opposite of Crank. <laughs> exactly. You Battle. can never forget about Biosentry Dam. Oh, shit. This is a boss fight. City Connection never had boss fights. Oh my it's a god! Fucking tank! Ah! Clary, it's fucking run! Can I can I just rock it into it? Oh yeah, that hurts it. Oh, this is good. I'm actually enjoying this. I'm kinda shocked. I will not be enjoying the other games we're about to play. Yeah, this might be the best one. I think that's why we're, we're that's why yeah. we're playing it for a bit. We want you all to see the good game the most. You see me skid on the ground at, was... at an angle? That's awesome. Shit, this is better than most iPhone games you get these days. <laughs> you can play Mega Man 2 with a virtual D-pad or something. Oh! Wow! You got on. I know what to do this time, though. Oh, and, uh, its life bar didn't regenerate. Oh, that's nice! I that's really it. nice! Ugh. That makes this fight more fair, a tank against a Honda no! City. No! What the hell was that? You went all the way up! No! <laughs> it's okay. I got we're this. We're alright, we got we're, we're cool. Your rocket meter regenerates, so it's just a matter of time. That was pretty cool, though. It was. There's so many different moves you can do with the rocket meter. You can launch yourself up in the air at an angle. I really 
do hope they make a sequel that they kept teasing making. Because I, I saw the picture and it looks like it's for like more modern consoles or Windows or something. Oh man, make it. Make you gotta it. make that thing. For all uh, the City so Connection fans. Fish, yeah, the car is actually a Honda City. That's mm-hmm. where the... Yeah. Yeah, it's based on... I think that was a vehicle only uh, available in Japan. It, it wasn't an official tie-in. They just sort of took the design and put it in the game. Yeah. As, as was common back then. You like something? Put it in your game. Copyright? What's that? Let's well, still do that now. We, yeah. Okay, I gotta remember the I button is the dash button. The all-important I mode button. We could do this. I am a pissed off motorist. <laughs> Mainly, I'm just glad that we're finally playing. What the hell? Okay, I'm not glad anymore. I take that back. <laughs> Video games are banned now. <laughs> okay, we're speed running this boss. Okay, we got it. This do is a this serious now. run we've, we've now. Been... I bought these games so long ago, uh, intending to stream them just to document this, because you know it's gone for good, not coming back. PlayStation Mobile was a really interesting idea that Sony basically wanted nothing to do with after it launched it. It was like, it realized how good it was, and it was like, oh shit, this is too good, we can't keep this going. <laughs> Mostly, it was uh, a smartphone store for the PlayStation Vita, along with other compatible smartphones. Not very widely adopted by smartphone manufacturers, and not very widely looked at, even by Vita owners. It was in a separate section that you could buy all these PlayStation Mobile-specific releases. And most of them were made by indie developers. Like really low budget Flappy Bird clones, things like that. And occasionally you'd see these re releases from Japanese devs or the people who own their IP. And for this, this is especially valuable because iMode games are no longer available for purchase. You might be able to emulate them, I don't know. <laughs> you just have to hope someone has ha- got the data and, like, you know, yeah. dropped it, basically. It's. And that's like kind of the problem with digital distribution in a lot of ways. If the data is gone, then it's so gone. unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So Sony decided to take down the store. You can't browse the games or buy new ones. Uh, as you see here, they're still playable if you bought them, but if you want to buy this, you can't. Gwah! He says. And Clarice is like, two more dudes to go. Good job, Clarice. That's a nice little image. That's cute. What a this is good! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> They made a right? good City Connection sequel for mobile devices. No, you can't buy it. <laughs> yeah, but and... at least this much is preserved for uh, mm-hmm. for history's sake. City Connection Rocket, not a bad sequel at all. Not, not at bad. All. So I'll be moving on, loading up the next game. Alright. Any more City Connection chat I missed out on? Um, let's see here. Uh... Yeah, um, it does have, uh, City Connection was re-released by Claris Disc and Hamster on, uh, PS4, the original arcade game. Mm-hmm. And so you can play the original there. It's, it's fun. I recommend it, honestly. I really like yeah. City Connection. So what are we doing? So next up is Apley Archives, um, Jalico Argus and Field Combat. So these mobile games, they were originally released separately, but when they released these PlayStation Mobile compilations, they had to pack a whole bunch of them in. I forget how much these were. They were either $2.99 or $3.99 each. Uh, And if you bought a couple, you probably decided that you overpaid. (laughs) These games are relics. They are of their time. Very interesting from a historical perspective, but not so much if you're looking for a fun game. So this game is a little bit more primitive than City Connection Rocket. Just a bit. I... uh, Hold on, what is this? This is Argus, a vertically scrolling shooter that was originally for the Famicom and maybe arcades? Not quite sure. It's basically Xevious. Uh, In this game you automatically fire and a separate button does your bomb. So yeah, it's Xevious. 100% Xevious. 
That was sort of common back then. Japanese devs would release a huge hit in the arcades, and immediately the race would begin to start cloning it. That most infamously happened with Space Invaders. Like, every single Japanese developer back then released a Space Invaders clone. Talking Sega, talking Nintendo. They just, they didn't even see it as ripping it off. They were just like, here's a variant on Space Invaders. And it's just a thing that would happen. And so too followed uh, with Xevious, apparently, and Argus. What's going on? 81 Rambler calls this, uh, Argus is played by real player. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm no Argus expert. I finally reached land, at least. So as some concession to mobile devices, you auto-fire. You don't have to hold down a... It's over? No, no, come on. I'm not done talking about Argus. We have so much to say. We have a lot to What are your favorite here. Argus memories, Alex? I know you pl had a lot to say about City Connection. Uh... Oh, you know me and Argus. I will not shut up about it. Well, first of all, my favorite thing is when you shoot. Yeah. And then you also drop the bombs. I also like that this game just straight up just looks like Xevious. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't... I'm just like... It's... What can I say? Yeah. It's Argus. This game was basically uh, famous, or as famous as it was, for being a Xevious clone back when people wanted to play Xevious clones. To bring it back in any form is kind of questionable. I guess it makes sense for mobile platforms, because you can dumb it down enough to make sense for a uh, keypad control. Yeah, Still, and... does anyone want to play Argus, even in 2003? <laughs> yeah, as I've already mentioned, most uh, mobile shooters have uh, auto-fire, including even a lot of modern Cave uh, mobile stuff, so and that mm -hmm. makes sense, the auto-fire. Cave, the developer, actually figured out a pretty good solution for uh, mobile controls, because it's uh, you just hold anywhere on the screen and you drag your finger around and that moves your ship. It makes you move a little bit faster than you could in the original arcade releases, but... You know, you have to make some concession for the switch in input. And it's better than a virtual D-pad, god forbid. So, a Xevious clone style game made for the arcade, ported to a mobile phone. 20 years later, yes. Ported to... Shit, I can't do it! I can't do it! I'm sorry, to the everyone. Ported PSTV. The... PlayStation ported to mobile. PlayStation TV, run through a splitter, put through to an Elgato, rendered via our computer, and streamed to the internet. Yes, that's this how this is being done. This game has gone through so much to get to us, and it's... I'm sorry, it may not be worth it. I'm gonna be that guy. These also include manuals, which is kind of nice, if unnecessary, for these games. They put what little effort they had to into these. These are okay collection... Connect collections i was surprised by the uh the japanese phone number there and also the uh the fact that you should inquire via fax oh i am a hundred percent going to fax hamster That's so good it's listed above the email address i'm going to demand that they re-release oh god what arcade game do i want them to give me oh right you could also do this this is chopped off on our screen but don't worry about it uh, if you're playing on a PlayStation Vita, you can use the touch screen to actually touch a uh, telephone-style keypad if you really want to play it like that. If you, really, if you really hate yourself that much. In fact, even better, you can play it vertically oriented. You can actually hold it like an actual cell phone. To give yourself the original experience here. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It kind of is. These are such crap games for the most part, but they were given at least a little bit of love. And I can appreciate that. There's a few more games here. There's Budasan, which was another very old Jalico arcade game, one that I've never actually played. Uh, if anyone knows anything about that, please, please fill us in. <laughs> I love the music. That's good. That's crazy pig music. What? Uh, okay. Oh, what? I think this is the game where you throw things at each other. This seems familiar. Like, why do I know this game? Okay, the button lets you pick up bombs and throw them around, I guess. Oh, I'm familiar with neither this game nor the arcade original, so I'm completely lost. It looks like they count down. Uh, it looks like you can hold them long enough where they explode in your hands. As, as just happened there. 
bombs, you can apparently put them on top of each other and they add up? Alex, what's happening? Glutasan! Is this a pig math game? Did I get tricked into playing a math game? You did get tricked into playing a math game. Well, we've got one minute and fifty seconds of this left, so, uh... I hope you all learned something. Hope you learned. Don't play bomb ball with pigs. I was gonna say, I hope you learned some math, but I guess that that works too. <laughs> Music's cool, at least. Yeah, I love It's very music. appropriate. It's weird to think that this was 2003 and City Connection Rocket was 2004. The mobile market just grew really oh, fast. Oh, thank you, Smiths. Um, they just linked to a picture of uh, this game's box art in uh, by U.S. Gold, Danny. U.S. Gold. Oh dear god. <laughs> Psycho Pigs? It was released as Psycho Pigs? Psycho Pigs UXB. Oh man. Okay, so as, we men as we've mentioned on the stream before, uh, US Gold, Ocean, and other companies made a habit of licensing Japanese arcade games and porting them to European home computer systems like the ZX Spectrum. And <laughs> Psycho Pigs is the result. <laughs> that is an amazing cover, Alex. I, I hope this guy li watches. He looks like someone who should be watching our stream. Quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. I hope he, I hope, He'd fit I hope right the in. Psycho Pig is watching right now. I welcome him with open arms. <laughs> well, I'm getting used to this. This is a pretty basic pick up and throw game where you just throw bombs at, at dudes. Pigs, rather. The sprites are all pretty varied and detailed enough, I guess. I just wonder how faithful this is to the original arcade game, or if it's like a, a spin-off. I may never know. That would involve loading up MAME and playing Buddha-san. Nothing I would ever think to do. Man, if the arcade game was anything like this, though, you could say it's a, a predecessor to Bomberman. It's pretty similar. Oh, what? Nice! Also, yeah, this is, uh, according to BBH, this is a lot slower than the original arcade game, which oh, I would, would be consistent with what's going on here, yeah. Mina Dai Kidai Da. Um, this pig uh, attached some candles to his head, stripped naked, and uh, is hammering an effigy to a tree while screaming, I hate everyone. <laughs> I like that. I hate. I understand, like, I understand the, the religious No, the, the bottom I, says, Mina na dai ki dai da. Oh, it's dai ki dai, so, so it's like, I fucking hate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, ski, That's you. Like, ski is like, and dai ski is love. Uh, dai ki dai is real bad. <laughs> yeah, so... That's, that's good. I enjoyed that. That made this purchase all the worthwhile. <laughs> I no longer feel bad about buying this game. Let's go on to Exerion DX. We are all Buddhasan. Maybe I'm a Buddhasan fan. I gotta check that game out. Now, Xerion, I have played. This is a very early shoot 'em up. I almost, I almost said vertically scrolling, but that's not really the case. Uh, you'll see. So this is an infinitely scrolling shooter. Very early. We're talking early '80s. I don't th even think there's uh, distinct levels or anything. It just throws a whole bunch of enemies at you, and you shoot them. And there's this pseudo 3D effect going on at the bottom, which is kind of poorly represented here. It looks better in the arcade version. But look at it this way. You're, you're stuck on the subway. People filling the thing up with farts. You, you've had it. You've had it up to here. You open up your cell phone, you think, I hate everybody. How can I, how can I relieve some of the stress? Thank God Jalico ported my favorite Famicom game, Exerion, to feature phones. That makes the day so much, so much more tolerable. I can't wait for people to invent Monster Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, these games had a very brief window of popularity, but they served a niche. It was a time when you either had to bring a dedicated handheld console with you onto the train, or look on your uh, phone's app store. And if you happen to find something even remotely playable, it was amazing, because it meant not having to acknowledge the world around you. This 
game's pretty tough, by the way. Not really much else to say about Exerion. It's, uh, it is what it looks like. There was an arcade version, and there was going to be a sequel for the NES. Uh, that's NES, not Famicom. Someone found a prototype of a US version of Exerion 2. I don't know if that ever got dumped. I think it did. Uh, it's not too different from the original Exerion. It's basically just a, a reskin from what I've seen. Well, shit. There's 500 yen flushed down the toilet, or however much that cost when it first came out. Exerion DX. Nothing DX about it. I didn't enjoy that. Sorry, Jalico, I gotta be straight with you. Now, Field Combat. This is a weird game. This is another shooter where you control some kind of spacecraft, and in addition to shooting, you can also suck up enemies and recruit them, I think. We'll see if the mobile version plays anything like that. This was released in arcades and also a very early game for the Famicom. Oh, this game! And, oh, the graphics got a pretty nice upgrade here. Yeah, look, you got a tractor beam where you can suck dudes in. In theory. There we go. Or you can just shell them. Capture them or shell them, it's up to you. Also, this game blatantly rips off the soundtrack to Satan's Hollow. Just thought it should be known. It's the same piece of classical music, I'm it, not... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, the Satan's Hollow Defender has logged on to RetroPals chat here. <laughs> yep. Do not talk shit on Satan's Hollow in my presence. That game is alright. So it's not just about shooting dudes, you do have to make progression. It doesn't automatically scroll, you have to decide to do it yourself. And yeah, I can't really attest to the accuracy of the other games we've seen tonight, but this one is a pretty straightforward port of the original Famicom and arcade game. Also, it calls levels patterns, which is pretty weird. It's like calling them boards. Get in my ship! Get in! Join the club! Join the Field Combat Kids Club! <laughs> only for cool kids who have heard of Jalico. That means nobody. Oh, damn it! I blew up. I don't know, I'm trying to think of things that Jalico would be known for, and all I can think of is City Connection and I guess Base is Loaded. Uh, that was pretty popular here in the States and in Japan. I guess in Japan they had the Ninja Jajamaru series, but that didn't really make it out over here. Several games they tried to translate and failed to release. Ninja Jajamaro, just infamous for not being able to close the deal on a U.S. release for his games. God, that poor guy! Just... Ninja Taro, uh, squashed, unreleased. I don't like these things. Here we go, I'm gonna sneak through. Done. Pattern clear. So really, this looks simple, but what you're seeing here is history. This is something you will probably never see again. Certainly not in a streaming context. I can't imagine any streamers out there uh, building an audience off of Jalico cell phone games. I don't know, you might be able to do it. Like, play some Jalico games uh, in between downtime, between Overwatch matches. <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> welcome to the welcome to Jalico Overwatch Gaming, where we love <laughs> nothing but Overwatch and Jalico. Brand? Yeah, the Jalico Overwatch brand. I'm gonna be uh, maining Genji while you play... Uh... Lucio, first of all. <laughs> yes. And we'll both be playing Jalico games whenever we uh, take a death. That's how we're gonna get the big bucks, Alex. <laughs> that will make... That will That's what you call crossover appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of getting into this. I never really liked much field combat before, but this mobile version is making me uh, appreciate it. I feel like this is a more worthwhile purchase than Exerion. But that's the end of it. Oh, Field God. combat. Available now nowhere. <laughs> yes! Thank you for showing- 
I don't know why you mentioned Rival Turf chat. I Oh, because it's by Jalico, duh. Um, but, I, they, oh, I love that Rival Turf cover. Danny has that game, and I'm looking at it right now, and mm -hmm. it's so good. That cover is the best. It's beautiful. Who was it who was playing uh, the Japanese version recently? I think it was Macaw. He was playing the, uh, the Japanese Rushing Beat series. Let's go ahead and move on to everyone's favorite, Burger Time. Yep, Burger Time got some mobile adaptations. Did, did Burger Time? Did, did Jalico do the original Burger Time? That's... No, yeah, that fuck? was Data East, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, well... So I guess... Oh, this is G-Mode. Okay, so G-Mode also did Data East games. Okay. Uh, this is a cheat. <laughs> this is no longer in Jalico <laughs> territory. Jalico and Data East are basically the same company, the same fucked up... <laughs> Uh, interesting, but very flawed game developer. So what is this, uh, G... Time? G mode burger time. Is that oh. like when your burger is in God mode? Yeah, that's an invincible burger. You can't eat it. Don't even fucking try. I love burger time. So, this I looks like this. a pretty straightforward port. Uh, your character moves a lot faster than in the original, and the play space is smaller, but the graphics are pretty good. Also, gotta admit, Burger Time is one of the few arcade games that I am just complete garbage at. Like, I cannot <laughs> even begin to understand how you play this game. It's... Eventually you run out of pepper and you're just screwed. A lot of it involves, like, uh, corralling the enemies and mm -hmm. using their patterns against them, but I just... it's lost on me. This version, though, it seems dumbed down enough where even an idiot like me can enjoy it. <laughs> I always like freezing enemies on top of the burgers and then just dropping them. So when did you first play, like, Burger Time? Oh, man. Because I have a Burger Time story. D tell your Burger Time story. Okay, okay. I have no attachment to so it. So the first time I played Burger Time, and actually one of the first times I may have played an arcade game, was at the L.A. Museum of Science and Industry. They had a <laughs> large display area near the front of the museum with the very big monitors. And if you went, they had a really shitty quiz, like about health or mm -hmm. I don't fucking know. And if you got the questions right, you could play Burger Time on this giant screen. Whoa, and Burger Time as a reward. That's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, and I, I actually really, I got really good at it, and it was really, well, not really good at it. I mean, it's good as you could be when you're like, I don't know, eight, seven, or mm -hmm. something. I don't know. And yeah, by the time I was playing it, it was actually kind of outdated, but it was Still, pretty you're cool. playing a video game at the museum, and that's, And yeah. you know, I never played it in the arcade, and I never played it anywhere else aside from there until I got into emulation. <laughs> yeah, I think the first time I played uh, Burger Time was the NES version through emulation. So, yeah. Not one I encountered uh, back in the day. That museum was pretty cool. It also had a game where you could simulate uh, driving as driving drunk. It was uh, based on on uh, Atari's night driving, and they actually uh, modded it to be purposely uh, undrivable. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. They replaced it with a nicer 3D version of it last time I went in like the mid-2000s, but yeah. So in just a couple minutes while we were talking, I passed three levels. I'm on level four right now, I think. This is a very briskly paced, well-done game. Crap, I need to keep talking museum. <laughs> <laughs> I am out of pepper, though, so that's why I died there. I yeah, eventually... Your pepper doesn't regenerate between levels or when you lose lives, so it's a, a finite resource that you very quickly run out of. I, I don't like it. <laughs> I think Burger Time should give you more pepper. But who am I to argue with a classic? Yeah. Burger Time has, has How do you know more it's than done its dues. East? It's proved itself. And this mobile version, really not bad. This is... I could see this being very controllable with a keypad. Graphics are nice and detailed. It's not annoying or terrible. Nice work, the Ghost of Data East. Let's go ahead and quit this and head out, get some more games here. What else in this, is in this collection? I don't even know what this is, but let's play it. Should also note that we uh, wanted to play Momoko 1200%, which is another Jalico cell phone game. It will not run on the PlayStation TV. It'll run on my PlayStation Vita, but not this device. Really unfortunate. This game, meanwhile, has taken a really long time to load, but it's loading. Uh, blah, pitch and puzzle. You want to turn the sound on? Sure. 
this. We're doing this. Picross? This bubble wrap? And... I can't even tell you what those things are. Uh, okay. Let's do it. Oh, that's a lot of words. Data East, what did you do? Did you fuck up Picross? God help me if you did. I think that's what they did. Oh, oh sometimes there's spikes underneath. That's fun. I don't know. I this I would love to be able to figure out this incredibly event. complex game, <laughs> apparently. It's a bit too much for the retro pals here, unfortunately. Whew, it's no burger time. I'm just dumb enough to get that. You you tell me to stomp on burgers, that I can do. You tell me to navigate a maze of giant bubble wrap looking for friendly creatures. I I don't want no part of that. Give me the burgers back. Burgers we can do. Burgers, the the retro pals were all very good at burgers. Oh, snowboard snowboard man. Snowboard huh? man. <laughs> okay. That I've never heard of. I'm pretty sure this is a mobile phone original. So let's go ahead and enjoy this. Let's see if it matches up to the standards of the Final Fantasy VII snowboarding game, which also got converted to mobile. Wait, for reals? It was one of the first mobile games released, yeah. <laughs> People really wanted to uh, experience Cloud going down that mountain, popping balloons. But this is Snowboard Man. No, wait, Snowboo Man. Fucking nice. <laughs> get this started. He's telling me to go to my mark and not to miss my chance or something. We will absolutely go to our mark. Miss a chance? <laughs> That's not like the retro pals. We've not never us. missed any chances. Eh, here we go. Okay. Come on, Snowboo. Hey, this looks alright. Look at this. Hey! Some nice little 16-bit-ish graphics there. Oh, tricks! I'm tricking! I tricked right into a tree and I died. <laughs> he died as he lived. Doing extreme stunts. That's why it's called Snowboo, because he's a fucking ghost. Mm-hmm. Damn it! I keep going for the Tony Hawk combos and it doesn't let me. Come on, Snowboo. Smash into that snowman. That's exactly what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. That's, That's Snowboo, kid, man, person. <laughs> Doomed to forever launch himself into that one tree. It's no Snow Brothers, and it's certainly no Snow Brothers 2 with new elves. Definitely not. Does not meet the standards whatsoever. Hey, there we go. Oh, because there's spikes on the tops of the trees, and that's what you're running. I don't oh, fucking okay. know. So it's a nice little side-scrolling platformer. Uh, very simple. There's just a jump button. That's all you do. And that's Snowboo Man. <laughs> Good job, Snowboo Man. We love you, Snowboo Man. We got one more game to check out here. Mm. And that means we're going back to Jalico. What we got? Because this... It's the Formation Z collection. Oh. Featuring bases loaded. Oh, nice. Let's go ahead and go through these in order. Formation Z, another very early arcade and Famicom game. Uh, this was a hor horizontally scrolling shooter where you could change between a ship and a robot, as was the style at the time. <laughs> We've mentioned before that that was a very common theme for games. Even had a pretty Transformers-like theme song there. And yeah, this is not an improvement. This is the, the original game. So when you're a robot, you can jump, you can shoot. Oh, 
that was a cool sound effect. How do I change, though? I want to be the cool bot. Maybe you have to collect a power-up or something. Nope! Here we go. Now we got this going. So yeah, nothing too exciting, but it was something like 82, 83. Gradius hadn't been invented yet. We didn't know what shooters should have been. This may not have even been released in the States. I know the NES version wasn't. I don't think the arcade version was either. But again, like Xerion, it does have its fans in Japan. Enough of a fan base to justify a, a mobile release. And there you go. And I crashed. <laughs> Good. Here, we're doing a speedrun now. See these strats? Very good. Time! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Formation Z. If you like it, that's a pretty good rendition of it. Uh, you might not like it, though. Yeah. Now, base is loaded. A.K.A. Moeru Pro Yaku. Known for being the most common Famicom game ever. That's much louder. This is the weirdest version of this I've ever heard. Yeah, what the hell? It's like done on like... It's done on a, on a church organ or something. <laughs> that's it! That's it! It's like we're at the... It's like we're at the polka festival. <laughs> Preacher talking about God and baseball. <laughs> so I'm the pitcher now. It looks like you can throw some pretty wild pitches here. You can make it go up and down. Twist. Yeah, like that. That's a foul. So like other people, I had the NES version as a kid and I played it a ton. It was one of the better baseball games back then. Oh, now we're changing. I don't know what to say other than this music is surprising. Alex, uh, it looks like you can only be the pitcher in this game. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, I'm controlling the pitcher still, even though it's the second inning. Chad is talking about how nice everyone's ass is in this game. Oh and yeah, this very game true. has very well-defined asses. Uh, it's very faithful to the original in that regard. Ah, it's being called asses loaded, booty loaded, um... <laughs> Booty's loaded. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Retro Pals, we're all about one thing. Old, old weird games and all the asses you can pick. Like, oh, these asses take up a significant amount of st screen real estate. Oh my god, I just realized, yeah! If you were to put it in a percentage, it would be something like 10% oh of the screen is made up of ass. I wasn't even, I was just like, haha, chat, you're so funny. Because you see the picture and it's like, oh my god, that's a lot of ass. And then you look at the batter and he's like sticking his ass out sexily. <laughs> Like Robotnik in Adventures oh of Sonic God. the Hedgehog. <laughs> well, I struck him out, and now it's time to be the pitcher again. <laughs> if you've ever wanted to play Bases Loaded, but uh, didn't like those annoying batting segments, not like that was the part you played the whole game to get to, uh, you can just be the pitcher. Just a baseball game where you can only be the pitcher. Beautiful. I'm going to try and hit him. Oh, you did it. Yes. Good. Oh, Game man. over. <laughs> you should have fucking hit him. Damn Everyone me. just throws down. I wonder down. what happens if I hit a guy in the head with a baseball. What? It's, I'm kicked out. Oh wow. It's like both teams just threw down their equipment and they were like, "Not cool, man." And they just all went home. <laughs> wow. These uh baseball players. They can dish it out, but they can't take it. So if you thought that was ridiculous, how about bases loaded bunt home run? Oh, I know exactly what this is. This is awful, isn't it? It's just your... No, no, don't do a bunt game. Well, uh, what if you were the batter, but you could only bunt? That's right. The uh, Japanese iMode Marketplace is a digital version of the monkey's paw. Uh, anything you want will come out of it fucked up and wrong. So in this game, you have to hit a home run by bunting. It's pretty hard. What happened to this music? It's 
totally different this time. Oh, oh damn. It was only a 77 meter bunt. What the fuck? This game's ridiculous, Alex. Oh, that barely made it to the outfield. <laughs> I can do better than that. Yep. Home run! How did the you The world's do first that? bunt home run. The pitcher should feel bad. <laughs> he should be... He, that entire team needs to go home because... <laughs> You're done. You can't play baseball anymore. You're I, all going back to Little League. That's how it works. Oh, my God. If I saw a butt home run in real life, I... Oh, God. I would be like, who put the drugs in my nachos? <laughs> <laughs> the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. Oh it's pretty silly. It's... Yeah, they actually did this. There is something alluring about making a, a home run while bunting, but it's not the first game mechanic that would come to mind. Well, there we go. We got one home run by bunting. I'd say that's pretty good. I'd say my success rate would be 0% in real life. This is so good. Unbelievable. And if you think that's unbelievable... Oh, no. What's how about next? Othello, but based on Bio Senshi Dan? That's it. No. No. This isn't This real. is enough for Alex, yeah. No, I'm. that's it. I'm closing down the stream. Um... Well, I'd like to thank you all for watching, folks. I... We gotta do a versus com. There he is, Bio Senshi Holy Dan, shit. updated for the 21st century. He's uh, gonna play fucking Othello with me, huh? If you're unfamiliar, uh, I don't blame you, first of all. Second of all, Bio Senshi Dan was a platformer released in Japan for the Famicom. By Jalico, obviously. It was going to get a US release under the title Bashi Bazook Morphoid Matcher. Bashi Bazook, Morphoid Masher. <laughs> Edit that so it sounds like I said that perfectly. I will. Uh, since then, that game was cancelled, by the way. It never came out here in the States. Since then, there was no sequel, no other word of anything from good old Bashi Bazook slash Bio Senshi Dan. That's what they used to call me in college, by the way. <laughs> Until this came out, and Jalico decided, hey, let's make a Bio Senshi Dan Othello game. That's something that actually happened. They, they did that. <laughs> so that involved not just making an Othello game, but updating this ancient character with a 21st century character design. As you saw there. Mm -hmm. He's a very uh, 80s looking hero otherwise. And I guess that'll conclude this first segment. I'll go ahead and finish out this game, just so you can see what uh, a game over screen looks like. But yeah, that was the most surprising thing. Bashi Bazook, I actually wrote an article about for Lost Levels. You can uh, read that to find out all the differences between the Japanese and planned US releases. Yeah, that's the article I uh, put in chat for y'all folks. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Pretty good articles at that site. Also look for my feature on Bioforce Ape. And other, your... and other games that start <laughs> that with bio. bio. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fascination, what can I say? I can't make any moves all of a sudden. <laughs> 80 Run Rambler says they're going to play Rodland Shogi next. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, they made a new Rodland game for the Nintendo Switch. I That's... shit you not. It's actually, it's called Soul Dam 2. It's a sequel to an ancient Jalico arcade game. But it has Rodland characters in it. That's God amazing. help me, Rodland characters appear on your Nintendo Switch here in 2017. Rodland's back, baby. I say as I play a, a Bio Senshi Dan based Othello game. <laughs> With Jalico, there are no rules, basically, and that's kind of why I love them. They just did whatever, and it didn't really matter if those games sold or not. They just wanted to make the games that they made, and that's what they did, until they eventually went bankrupt. <laughs> that's... That's not as a, an uplifting an ending for that story that I was planning, but <laughs> they did what they wanted in the time that they were here, and they made some pretty memorable games. They made City Connection. They almost made Bashi Bazook. Almost. They made a few bases loaded games that made a lot of kids happy back in the day. And they live on in our hearts and in unavailable to the public mobile game compilations for PlayStation mobile platforms. Really a fitting end for Jalico. Uh, <laughs> their last things being mobile games that you can't buy anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of Bio Senshi Dan. Sorry I've let you down. Rip, Dan. We're, we're done. 
it won't even let me advance from here. It's like, shut off your cell phone. You're done. <laughs> Literally just shoot your cell phone with a gun and then throw it in the ocean because you fucked up too bad. That's about as inappropriate as an ending as we're going to get for this. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff came out on PlayStation Mobile and it's really heartbreaking that it's no longer available. I just like having this out there for archival purposes. Like you've ever, if you ever need to look this up for uh, historical research or just out of your own curiosity, it would be nice that these games were available to all. And it's a shame that the reality of digital distribution prevents that. Yeah. Because everything you buy digitally, one day it's going to disappear. It's a rental. You're not buying things. It has no value. It's a rental that can disappear at any time. Because what you're buying is not the game, you're buying access to it. And mm -hmm. at any time they can take away that access. At any time, yeah. whether deliberately or through hardware upgrades or through firmware changes, those games can be inaccessible. Digital distribution does have its, high, its uh, advantages, but just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm.